It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're in a bit of a frenzy on Wednesday's episode, packed full of all the news that you need from around the NHL impacting your fantasy squad. Thank you for joining us for the Wednesday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Let's get this paper. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back inside the lab to your source for fantasy hockey news and daily degenerate gambling breakdowns. It's the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. We are a part of the Locked On Network, your team, every single day. And thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Steele and I are here Monday through Friday for y'all. And of course, on that side of the microphone, it is my boy, Steele Roden. And on this side of the microphone, your other boy, Big Flip Livingstone. Man, I'm fired up for today's episode, everybody. Wednesday, jammed full of news. Patrick Laine on the IR. Andre Burakovsky, six to eight weeks following surgery. He's out. Taylor Hall on IR. And a whole bunch of other news, including Andre Svechnikov nearing his return. And what is going on in the Toronto blue paint? Steel. Holy cow. Here we go. I'm turning it right over to you because, again... Patrick Laine showing that he's an effective offensive piece when he's healthy. He's banged up again. Mind you, that was a pretty lethal hit, I would say, by Rasmus Anderson. You and I haven't talked about that very much. So what's your take on this entire situation? Maybe start with that hit. Yeah, lethal, but absolutely vicious. You know, we're mm-hmm. talking about a game where the dying seconds, it was, I think the I think the uh, the horn had already gone off to end the game and it was Rasmus Anderson, you know, the flames were down. He goes to finish his check. Patrick line already sort of shot the puck. You could, I, I don't think it was the, I don't think it was interference necessarily, but it was the aggressiveness mm. as well as him jumping off his skates. He left Seemingly, the ice. Yeah. So that was the one point of head, a uh, point of contact was the head as well. And line just got absolutely flattened. So, um, yeah. you know, they, they, they reprimanded him properly. He got a four game suspension. He's appealing, but I think it's going to stick. It's going to stick for sure. Because yeah. there was no, there was no reason Rasmus Anderson should have been a finishing that check in the dying mm-hmm. seconds, but B leaving the sur- the ice surface to finish that check and make point of contact with yeah. Ryan's head. But on, on top of that, I'm not shocked at all. Like we expect Patrick Line to be mm. injured at some point during the season. And yeah. it's already happened twice so far this year. Um, and it's probably going to happen again. Obviously this guy lands on the IR. Uh, mm. He just lands on the IR for the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's probably landing on the IR for your fantasy hockey team out there, but it's a huge blow because again, when this guy is in the lineup, he is a point per game type of player. And we've seen that over the last two seasons. 52 yes. points in 55 games, 56 points in 56 games. Um, the problem is, again, he hasn't played a full season since 2018, 2019 season. That's four, five years ago. Uh, you know, once we get into 2024. So this is going to be devastating for the Columbus Blue Jackets. We were talking about them the other day. They're, you know, they pretty they started the year pretty well, three, yeah. two, and oh on the season. Yeah, so they're looking far. pretty good. Uh, a lot of that has to go to Elvis Merzlikens as well as Boone Jenner. Um, I haven't really seen much from Johnny Goudreau, even when Patrick Laine has been in the lineup. I haven't seen too much from him. Nevertheless, it's going to hurt them and your fantasy team with Laine out. It's one of those things that you have to come to expect, unfortunately, with this player. It's Every year. You know, every it's year feast, he gets hurt. It's, it's feast or famine. This time around... He just got absolutely trucked, and I feel yeah. honest, honestly bad for him and a little bit for the Columbus Blue Jackets because there was some nice balance in that top six really forming, mixing around. Man, Boone Jenner is such a solid fantasy piece. You know, shout out to him one time as well. But him going out day to day, you know, he's on the IR. It's hopefully not serious. He had so far, what, two points in four games, a goal and an assist. So not a torrid hot start, but a solid start. Not too bad. I need to see this guy shoot the puck. A lot more than nine times in four games, though, Steel. I know he's been banged up. I understand the confidence that com- like is lacking when you're not able to stay in the lineup all the time, and I think that has been a bit of the problem with this player. 
I just need to see him stick in the lineup. It's a common narrative. We don't need to go down that path anymore. Just need to highlight that you're going to need to probably shelve this guy once again and be ready to shuffle him in and out of your lineup as you see fit because it's going to happen again most likely. Andre Burakovsky, funny, another guy who has some trouble sticking in the lineup steal. Six to eight weeks after going, I don't know what kind of surgery it was. I know last year he had a torn groin. I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it was an upper body injury. Yeah, I think it's upper body, but it's a procedure nonetheless. And this was supposed to be an injury that was, quote, to quote Dave Hackstall, was supposed to be short term. So six to eight weeks is obviously an impact on this team that is already struggling to score goals. One, four, and one for the Kraken over their first six games. You know, we're recording a little early. We don't know what happens in Tuesday night's action. But this team is struggling to score goals. And now all of a sudden, Matty Beneers is struggling. Burakovsky's out. This is a guy, though, Steele. Let me just bring up the numbers. When he has been healthy over the last couple of years, he's been effective. 61 points in 80 games two years ago. Last year, 39 points in 49 games. It's just, again, the health. But I really do think this Seattle team might be in trouble if they can't turn it around in a hurry offensively because they have looked pretty stagnant. Yeah, for the first month at least uh, without Andre Burkowski, it's going to be a struggle. And this is a player that I like to draft on my team in the later stages of the draft. Me too. Uh, you know, the peripherals don't really stand out for Burkowski, but Correct. And this is also a player that doesn't really drive the offense. Mm-hmm. But what he does do well is he puts himself into proper position and, 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 and proper scenarios to facilitate and play make for his teammates. Again, this guy can get himself into areas and just shoot the puck. He has a wicked snapshot. Again, not a driving force for the offense, but he's one of those players that is one of the, he, he's he's pretty much the glue of the team. He can kind of bounce around from line to line and get his line mates going into the action that's true. earlier. Good point. So I really like Burakovsky for that reason, and that's probably one of the reasons why they're struggling offensively. Again, mm. he's not a driving force for them, but he sets up his teammates. He puts himself into situations and areas where he can make a pass. He can shoot the puck real quick and get it on net for a rebound. So that's something that the Seattle Kraken are going to have to look into a couple of their other players to step up in the absence of Burakovsky right now. And one of those guys that I'd be looking at, currently a dual position eligible player, only owned at 3% in Jaden Schwartz, who's going to get moved up that lineup and a little bit more time on ice in the top six. Also a guy, Steele, who has 14 shots on net so far, seven hits and four block shots. So I know personally I'm tipping my hand a little bit here into our leagues as I click the add button here. Jaden Schwartz is going to get a look for me over the next couple of days as I need to fill in. I believe I have a guy hurt up front. I think he's going to be a good injury fill-in. Keep your eye on what happens with Seattle, though. If they do struggle to score, I'll probably be dropping Schwartz once again. But this is what you're going to have to do when these players get hurt. We're going to continue to talk about injuries around the break with Devin Levi and a return from injury and Andrei Svechnikov. What's going on with the Leafs? Big-time bets, but very quickly, Steele. Taylor Hall. Hurt once again, week to week. He's on IR. They're saying that he's re-aggravated this left shoulder, and I think that's what's most concerning for me is we know he's had shoulder problems in the past. And I think this is an injury that's been nagging him for a little while, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But he's back on IR. And this was one of those players, given the Connor Bedard effect, that we were getting to a point where maybe you add him at the end of drafts, or at least he was a waiver wire look. Now I'm thinking you got to get away from this player altogether and maybe just keep an eye on him when he returns. I think, yeah, I think that was the route I was going to be going. I don't think you necessarily have to drop him right now. If you want to just place him on the IR, if you have mm. one of those available spots, if you, ready, do, then, yeah. if you do, then go ahead and do that. But, you know, especially when he, when he does make his return, he's going right back on that top line with Connor Bedard uh, and Ryan be, Donato. Yeah. So um, yeah, this is a player who struggled with injuries last year a little bit and has struggled with injuries throughout pretty much his entire career. Mm-hmm. And again, it's one of those players that you're not really shocked to see land on the IR because of how often he gets injured. But when right. he does come back, if he's on the waiver wire, mm-hmm. I would go up and pick him because yeah. I'm not necessarily ready to drop him or make that decision that he's not going to be able to produce unless mm. he's actually playing. If he's playing mm-hmm. with Bedard and Donato and sure. you see for four five, six games straight that he's not getting anything done, then you for sure drop him. But for right now on the IR, I think you just place him there or maybe just leave him on your bench. 
given that a lot of teams, a lot of GMs, I know our league, I think what we only have one or two IR spots. That's where it gets tricky for me. Yeah. If you have a Patrick Line or you have an Ar- Victor Arvidsson or some of these guys that are we know are going to be out and you have the option that keep them there and Taylor Hall has to be dropped. That's what I mean, but I hear you as well on your angle, 100%. We got about a bunch more fire angles for the fantasy heads out there coming up around the break, but today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is always what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber not cash baby and with all the parts and needs at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that dub keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to our customers in the u.s hey everyone chris from locked on avalanche here if you like using debit over credit i just learned about something that's definitely a game changer discover cashback debit It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases, which means you can get cash back on NHL tickets or head-to-toe hockey gear to make this season a total win. Check out eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashbackdebit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network where you can find your favorite team from all four major sports leagues, including the NCAA, your team every single day. And Flip, a lot more injuries to talk about coming Mm -hmm. from the Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. Devin Levi, again, out for back-to-back games. He won't make his return until next week for the Buffalo Sabres, but... You know, like, how do you feel that he's played so far in the, in the mm. four games that he's played? You know, the Buffalo yeah. team, Buffalo Sabres have just, they've struggled a lot offensively. Uh, I don't think, for yes. me personally, I don't think a lot of this can be put on the goaltending or even the defensive group necessarily. I think most of their games have been one goal games besides their uh, b- besides their season opener where they got slapped around 5-1 by the New York Rangers. But other mm. than that... It's the offense that has just really been terrible and slacking to get going. Tage Thompson, I watched the game last night. This guy needs to get into the game. He needs to drive the offense. All I see from him right now is him hanging around the perimeter. We know what he can do from the perimeter on the power play, but people, uh, a lot of his opponents now are playing him like Alex Ovechkin. He's getting no opportunities or no sco- uh, scoring opportunities. Mm. And all I see from him right now is hanging around the perimeter. This guy's got sweet hands. He's got slick hands. He's got fast feet. uh, And and right now, I just don't see him moving. It's so true. Very good breakdown on that. And very firstly, shout out to Game Time. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Forgot that off the top steal. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. That's number one. Number two, you broke that down so beautifully. The confidence, I think, that has to come through this team and support their rookie goaltender. They got to score more goals. And yeah, his rebound control is leaving a lot to be desired right now. That'd be my only hole to poke. But you can't expect this kid to come into the NHL with the limited sample size that he's had in what I think it was, what, three games or something like that? Maybe five? Seven games last year. There you go. You got to put up more goals. This is an offensive first club. They lit the league on fire last year. And when you struggle to score, your overall confidence and mojo for your team is going to suffer. And that is going to impact the guy on the ice with the least experience. And it, it happens to be your most important piece, arguably, in Devin Levi. So I am not concerned about what I've seen from Devin Levi at all in terms of where I think he'll be at the end of the year. But what I'd be concerned about is the offensive output with this Buffalo Sabres club and they better figure out in a hurry because of all the points we mentioned on the other episode the, earlier this week. Detroit looking beast. Ottawa looking pretty good. Leafers turning it around. Tampa's going to be there. Florida's going to be there. So they're going to need to figure it out in a hurry. Overall, Devin Levi, the injury. Let's see how he bounces back from it, Steele. That's how I'm looking at this in the biggest, widest angle. He's faced some adversity now. His team's not scoring. 
He's a little bit banged up. This is what being a number one veteran goaltender in the NHL is all about. So let's see how he bounces back after that, because I think that will might be more truly indicative of what we see from him the rest of the year is after this short stint on the, uh, on the bench here, nursing what looks to be, did he say lower body? You know, they're not going to say what it is, but I think it's lower body. Yeah. We, we won't see him back uh, for at least a couple of games, at least till next week. Lower body injury. Didn't lower participate body in-, in practice yesterday. Yeah, lower body injury for Devin Levi. Don't expect him back until early next week. Um, for the Buffalo Sabres, but who we can expect back very, Boom. very soon. Boom. Andrei Svechnikov of the Carolina Hurricanes is making some pretty good progress right now. He hasn't been, or he, ha- he has been practicing with the team or just by himself. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a back player. Full contact jersey. So this is a player good. that the Carolina Hurricanes desperately need right now. They are battling mm-hmm. battling some tremendous injuries to some star players on their team. Sebastian Aho, Andre Sveshnikov, Frederick Anderson, all injured right now. And you can see it with their game. They've got they've scored a ton. They're I think they're first or second in goals for this year. I believe they're also first in goals against. They're getting absolutely slapped around, and mm. and Sebastian the absence of Sveshnikov and Anderson and Aho is being a tremendous. You can see it in their game right now. Goals for this year: Detroit Red Wings have thirty, Carolina Hurricanes right there behind them with twenty eight, which is actually something that I think maybe it's the edge they're missing from this player a little bit. You know, they have six points. They're three and three. You mentioned getting slapped around. Maybe they're getting pushed around a little bit. So you haven't watched a whole ton of Carolina Hurricanes action. I know Sebastian Aho has been banged up as well. Um, this is a player to me. You turned my attention on to him as one of those fantasy banger league beauties. He loves to throw the body around. He loves to mix it up. 79 penalty minutes two years ago, 71 a year ago, over 140, 150, 160 hits. I want to see what he does. This was a very serious injury. There's been, he was supposed to be back a long time ago. He was supposed to be ready to go. So there's the apprehension. But If for some reason he's out there in your league and you're looking for to fill a hole, I know it'll probably be a much shallower league with fewer GMs and a lot more players out there. I'd be going out there and adding him right now. Most definitely steal. And I think given that the Carolina Hurricanes have scored so well without him, that might be one of the biggest things that I'm keeping an eye on is what does he do for the overall offensive output? Mm -hmm. However, The other end of the ice is where I want to talk about next for these Toronto Maple Leafs. Hit me with your take right away. I'm turning it right back over to you because you know what I have to say. Samsonov has looked shaky. Let's be real. It's been short, but he's looked shaky. And now Wall comes in in the fashion that he did and stood on his head against a Tampa Bay Lightning team that seemed to be ready to put the screws to the Leafs on Saturday. He's now earned his shot right now anyway. What's your take on this? Where do you think it goes? And what are your thoughts on Joseph Wall? I really like Joseph Wall. And, and you know, we talked about him a little bit when you yep. when we were discussing uh, that trade earlier in the year or earlier uh, a couple of months ago when you picked him up in the first round. For the draft, um, yep. This is a player that has been in the – in in the in the farm team with the Marlies for a long time and has just been trying to crack and get his opportunity with the Toronto Maple Leafs and we've seen what he's done over the last couple of years uh, in the in the short uh, small sample size that mm-hmm. we've seen four games in 2021 had a 911 save percentage seven games last year had a 932 save percentage right now two games 949 save percentage again small sample size each year of but he's finally getting that opportunity I'm not ready to mm-hmm. say that Joseph Wall is going to be the number one, I know that's yep. been one of one of the biggest narratives right now in the Toronto mm-hmm. uh, in the Toronto atmosphere and in in the media about by the end of the year, Wall will be the number one guy. I'm not ready to say that because Fair. even though Sam Stonov has looked shaky uh, in a couple of games, I actually thought he played really well against the Florida Panthers, even though they lost. Mm-hmm. Um, Good take. Even, even though that he has looked shaky given his track record with the Washington Capitals in the first three seasons with Toronto last year, I think he's proven himself that he can be a tremendous goaltender. You know, again, there's times where I, you know, obviously Sheldon Keefe made the right decision to get him out of that game against the Tampa Bay lightning. Nevertheless, I think this is a player that just lost his confidence for the moment. And Mm. once he does get back into the, into game, for the Toronto Maple Leafs that he's going to take full control and not try to, and not want to lose that number one starting job. So for me, I'm not ready to say that Sam Sonov or uh, Joseph Wall is going to be that number one guy right now. 
I agree with you on that take wholeheartedly. And I'll break down a little bit right after the break what I think about what this means for the fantasy value of both players because I'm so with you, Steele. It's too early to just now all of a sudden deem Joseph Wall after such a small sample size in the NHL and count out Ilya Samsonov after what he's done for this team. Also, I know he got hurt last year in the postseason. He looked bad. But Joseph Wall proved that he was able to come in and take the most of the opportunity. So I want to talk about that very quickly after the break and their fantasy value, what to do with these players and what I've done with them. And of course, our big time bet steal. Why don't you take us there? We will get there very, very shortly. But this episode is also brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. That's why we use the Game Time app here on the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guaranteed. Just for example, my girlfriend and I wanted to go watch an NHL game live, but we only had 20 minutes before puck drop, and Game Time was there to make sure we got our tickets fast. Last-minute ticket deals, flash deals, zone deals, everything you could imagine. Easy to find and buy your tickets for every kind of event in your area. You get views from your seats before purchase of the venue, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, all of the fun stuff. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. Buying tickets in seconds with only two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets for your events. And Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. And the game time guarantee means you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. This fall, stream your favorites and discover more with Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus together. Watch the highly anticipated new season of Loki and see the ghosts materialize in Haunted Mansion on Disney Plus. Catch more frights with The Boogeyman and American Horror Story Delicate on Hulu. And on ESPN Plus, get into the action with college football and NFL. All of these and more streaming now. Get the Disney Bundle with plans starting at $9.99 a month plans with espn plus starting at 14.99 a month terms apply see disneybundle.com for details and thank you so much for making the locked on fantasy hockey podcast your first listen every single day continue to hit the subscribe hit the follow button leave a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform we are going to get to big time bets very, very soon. Only mm-hmm. one game on the schedule for Wednesday night. Yep. But flip Joseph Wall and Ilya Samsonov. Yes. I know you agree with me that it's not yeah. time yet no. to give the crease over to Joseph Wall, even though he's nope. looked great. But yes. what else do you want to add on to that? I think I just want to make it clear because I have Joseph Wall. I'm invested. I've yeah. explained it. I've gone up in the draft for him. And I do think he is the goaltender of the future. But let's not forget about what's happening around him with this team, the core four, the contract situation, yeah. the pressure to win now. As in, I understand Sheldon Keith came out in the media and said that he foresaw this coming, that at some point they're going to rotate between these two goalies and saying all the right things to support both goalies. Fine. Mm-hmm. But when it comes down to it, all that matters is who's winning. <laughs> so you and I can't predict right now this team just needs to win. And Samsonov has been able to do that in a much larger sample size. And in the regular season, he's been pretty solid. Joseph Wall, on the other side, has seized the opportunity that he has had in his young career. In the playoffs, stepped in and did well. At the end of last season, stepped in and done well. But the main point here is, is they're both going to hold value steal. They're both going to hold value. And I think at the start of the season, we were looking at this at maybe like a 70% for Samsonov, 30% for Wall, or even a little bit more for Samsonov. Then it's changing. I'm thinking this is going to be more than a 50-50. And with that turnaround win from the Leafs, I'm trying to say is both of these goalies are valuable third goalie options or fill-ins week to week, depending on the Leafs schedule. That's all I had to say. Hit me with your take on that. Well, yeah, I think you're right. Well, I think 
I think they're, I think Ilya Samsonov is more than just a third string goalie for your fantasy hockey team right now. I still think he's going to okay. get more of the run out for okay. the Toronto Maple Leafs, unless we just see him absolutely fall apart over the next couple of weeks or, you know, later down the line mm-hmm. in the season. Other than that, I still think he's a valuable second string or second goaltender. I respect uh, it. Yeah, I so I, I really like Elias Samsonov, and, and and for me again, he he might have a couple of bad games here and there. Yeah, he's hopefully, fighting it right now. Hopefully, That's it's awful. not a consistent thing that we see from Samsonov and the Toronto Maple Leafs. But I really like the way that he battles in the crease. Sometimes he can get a little out there and he starts swimming a little bit, and he does look shaky, which we've seen mm. from times. Yeah, but overall, I really do like Elias Samsonov in the blue paint. And you see, Steele, that's why we do this together, baby, every Monday through Friday. And you hold me down. You're keeping me balanced. But, you know, it's hard to keep me even keel when we start firing off these bets, baby. I know it's only one game, which is weird. I don't know what the NHL is trying to do here. Well, I do know what they're trying to do. The frozen frenzy thing is a kind of a cool angle. You know, that's kind of going on right now. We'll see how that works out. But the one game after 16 games, I feel bad for the New Jersey (laughs) Devils and Washington Capitals who have to play in this one. But I think I got a couple of good angles here that you will like. Let me know. Why don't you take the reins? You kick us off because I got a same game parlay. So you want me to give her? Yeah, give her. I've got nothing for big time bets today. I am not placing a single bet Wednesday night. It's an absolute struggle. I was 0 for 3 Monday night. I don't know how my bets turned out Tuesday because we're recording early. But there's only one game on the schedule. It didn't work out for me on the one game on Monday. And I am taking a break for tonight. Respect. And you know what? The first thing that I looked at after what is such a loaded game, uh, night of games, Tuesday, and after actually, so both of these teams are on the second half of a back-to-back, this is a really tough spot to lay any bets. So Steele's already ahead of the game by not laying any, but why doesn't your degenerate Uncle Flip lay down a couple for you in a same-game parlay? First one, Washington in their last 10 games against the New Jersey Devils, 6-1-3, and three, only one loss in 10 games. Um That is something that I'm not going to count out because honestly, Steele, this feels like a game that's going to be one goal. They're both gassed. They both played a bunch of hockey as well. Washington struggling. Give me Washington on the puck line to keep this close. Plus one and a half. And remember, there's no odds there probably given this track record and given the second night of the back-to-back. But let me hit you with this angle, Steele. Charlie Lindgren is hurt in Washington. Darcy Kemper's backup is somebody named Hunter Shepard. 27-year-old AHL MVP, playoff MVP last season, making his NHL debut tonight looking like because it was Kemper Tuesday in the cage. So I think the Washington Capitals are going to be up for this game for this 27-year-old's NHL debut. And so give me the Washington Capitals on the puck line. And also with that angle, a lot of times when older goalies make their debuts or backups who don't play a ton make their NHL debuts, the teams in front of them play studly. Usually leads to an under. Six of the last 10 between these two have gone under the number. So give me the under 6.5. And if I had to have a lock of the night, it would be this. But since it's the same game parlay, they're all the same. John Carlson, in his career, also John Carlson leads the Washington Capitals in scoring with three (laughs) points, one goal, two assists so far. In his career, John Carlson has more assists against the New Jersey Devils than any other team he's ever faced. In 52 games in regular season action, 30 three assists give me the john carlson anytime assists i think he's gonna get an apple i'm loving this same game parlay steal although it is degenerate to bet on one game (laughs) after 16 were on the board last night but hey that's what we do baby so i hope you're liking those three that is what we do i am liking all those three but just for you because i ain't placing a single cent on wednesday night i gotta regroup rethink what i'm doing out here with these bets respect i gotta take back take a step back get a little perspective Thank and you. regroup myself. That's key. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Make sure you're tuning in Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time is when you can find all of our episodes. And again, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace. The NHL season is here, and the best way to find all the insights and reactions for every team all season long is with Locked On NHL. Don't miss a second of the season. Available every day for 30 minutes on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
Hey, Prime members, you can listen to this Locked On podcast ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today.